Hi everyone, welcome to Bedtime Stories. So today I am doing Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp. This is an extract from the Arabian Nights Entertainment, retold by Andrew Lang. There once lived a poor tailor who had a son called Aladdin, a careless idle boy who would do nothing but play all day long in the streets with little idle boys like himself. This so grieved the father that he died. Yet, in spite of his mother's tears and prayers, Aladdin did not mend his ways. One day, when he was playing in the streets as usual, a stranger asked him his age and if he was the son of Mustafa the tailor. I am, sir, replied Aladdin, but he died a long while ago. On this, the stranger, who was a famous African magician, hugged him and kissed him, saying, I am your uncle. I recognised you because you look so like my brother. You must go to your mother and tell her I am coming. Aladdin ran home and told his mother of his newly found uncle. Indeed, child, she said, your father had a brother, but I always thought he was dead. However... She prepared supper and told Aladdin to get ready to welcome his uncle. The strange man came laden with gifts of wine and fruit. He kissed the place where Mustafa used to sit, bidding Aladdin's, Aladdin's mother not to be surprised at not having seen him before, as he had been out of the country for 40 years. He then turned to Aladdin and asked him to his trade, at which the boy hung his head while his mother burst into tears. On learning that Aladdin was idle and refused to learn a trade, he offered to rent a shop from him and stock it for him. The very next day, he bought Aladdin a fine suit of clothes and took him all over the city, showing him the sights. At nightfall, he brought Aladdin home to his mother, who was overjoyed to see her son so fine. On the following day, he led Aladdin into some beautiful gardens, a long way outside the city gates. They sat down by a fountain, and the magician pulled a cake from his girdle, which he divided between them. They then journeyed onwards till they almost reached the mountains. Aladdin was so tired that he begged to go back, but the magician won him over with pleasant stories and led him on. As at last they came to two mountains divided by a narrow valley. We will go no further, said the false uncle. I will show you something wonderful. You gather up sticks while I kindle a fire. When it was lit, the magician threw a powder on it, and at the same time saying some magical words, the earth trembled a little and opened in front of them to show a square, black stone, with brass ring in the middle to raise it by. Aladdin tried to run away, but the magician caught him and gave him a blow that knocked him down. What have I done, uncle? Aladdin begged. The magician replied more kindly, Fear nothing but obey me. Beneath this stone lies a treasure which is to be yours, and no one else may touch it, so you must do exactly as I tell you. At the word treasure, Aladdin forgot his fears, and grasped the ring as he was told, saying the names of his father and grandfather. The stone came up quite easily, and some steps appeared. Go down, said the magician. At the front of those steps you will find an open door leading to three large halls. Tuck your gown and go through them without touching anything, or you will die instantly. These halls lead into a garden of fine fruit trees. Walk on till you come to an alcove in a terrace where stands a lighted lamp. Pour out the oil it contains and bring the lamp to me. The magician drew a ring from his finger and gave it to Aladdin, wishing him good luck. Nervously, Aladdin crept down the stairs. He found everything as the magician had said. He gathered some fruit off the trees got the lamp and hurried back to the mouth of the cave. The magician cried out, Make haste and give me the lamp. But Aladdin was suspicious. Only when I'm safely out of the cave, he yelled back. The magician flew into a terrible rage, throwing some more powder on the fire. He said more magic words and the stone rolled back into its place. The magician left Persia forever, which plainly showed that he was no uncle of Aladdin's. He was a cunning magician who had read his magic books of the wonderful lamp, which would make him the most powerful man in the world. 
Though he alone knew where to find it, he could only receive it from the hand of another. He had picked out the foolish Aladdin for this purpose, intending to get the lamp and kill him afterwards. For two days, Aladdin remained in the dark, crying and wailing. At last he clasped his hands in prayer, and in doing so, he rubbed the ring, which the magician had forgotten to take from him. Immediately, an enormous and frightful genie rose out, saying, What do you want from me? I am the slave of the ring, and will obey you in all things. Aladdin fearlessly replied, Deliver me from this place, whereupon the earth opened, and he found himself outside. As soon as his eyes could bear the light, he went home, where he fainted from exhaustion and shock the minute he went through the door. When he came to, he told his mother what had happened, and showed her the lamps and the fruits he had gathered in the garden, which were in reality precious stones. He then asked for some food. Alas, child, she said, our cupboards are bare, but I have spun a little cotton, and will go and sell it. No, Aladdin protested, you keep the cotton, I'll go and sell this rusty old lamp instead. The lamp was indeed very dirty, and Aladdin's mother began to rub it to clean it, so that it might fetch a higher price. Instantly, a hideous genie appeared, and asked what she wanted. She fainted, but Aladdin, snatching the lamp, said Baldy, fetch us something to eat. The genie returned with a silver bowl, twelve silver plates containing rich meats, two silver cups and two bottles of wine. Aladdin's mother came to and couldn't believe her eyes. Wherever did all this come from? She said. Don't ask, just eat, Aladdin replied, grinning. So she sat and tucked in. Aladdin told his mother about the lamp. She begged him to sell it and have nothing to do with devils. No, said Aladdin. Luck has brought it to me, so we will use it, and the ring too. When they had eaten everything the genie had brought, Aladdin sold the silver plates. He summoned the genie, who gave him another set of plates, and thus they lived for many years. The End